Good morning, everyone. It's Ms. Parkin. Um, today, we're going to be going over um, a review of what fourth and fifth grade has been learning in music class. Um, so our first unit for the year, the first nine weeks, we focus on our singing unit. And the logic behind that is that we're going to be singing throughout the year. So it's important for us to make sure that our singing abilities, that we're able to sing strong, beautiful, and healthy. Uh, to make sure that our voices are able to make it for the whole year of all the other singing stuff that we'll be doing this year. Um, they say, and this may be different um, now, but when I was growing up, they said the common fear was uh, the fear of public speaking. And so my philosophy at the very beginning of the year is that if we can overcome that, and students can be confident in not only their speaking voice in front of others, but their singing voice as well. There's pretty much nothing they can't do in life. Um, so uh, we've been working on our singing unit. And this is what our singing unit has been, uh, how, this is how our singing unit has been going. Um, we first start off a warm, with a warm up for our class. And we do that with this activity called Melody Writer. And this is a um, assignment that they'll be doing at the end of the nine weeks to conclude um, our uh, singing unit. And with this activity, the first note is always do, last note is always do. But um, as students are coming into class, um, each student takes a turn, as many students as possible, to put a uh, note on the board and we fill it up and then we end up singing whatever melody the students have come up with. And this is our warm up that we do every day in class. Um, and then we end up uh, we end up vocalizing and warming up our voices. We've been doing uh, different warm ups um, just to make sure our voice is uh, stretched and ready to actually sing. Uh, the voice, uh, the vocalis is actually a small muscle in your throat. And so just like we would stretch before going for a run or lifting weights, we, vocalization helps us stretch our voice muscle a little bit. So then it's ready uh, for us to sing without injury. Again, our key goals is strong singing, beautiful singing, and healthy singing. After we do our vocalization and our melody warm up, we do our calm time. And this is about two to three minutes for us just to be still. Um, some students have been actually reading uh, poems from a book that I have. Um, it's actually, um, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. It's um, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood by Fred Rogers. And so we use this opportunity to simply just kind of slow down, have a two, three minutes where we just kind of pause, breathe, just let the mind just think of nothing or um, just so that we can kind of let our brain kind of have a moment of quiet and calm because our students have been thinking a lot every day. And so um, I think it's important in music class for us to have a little bit of time where we could just kind of pause, breathe, and not have to be super focused in the moment. Um, after we're done with our calm time, we uh, do recorders. And we've been focusing on... Uh, four pitches for recorders. Those four pitches have been uh, G, which is the basic uh, basic one. Oh, let me see. Left hand is always on top. Yeah. Um, G, A, C, and then the trickier one that we've been learning um, is F. And F is three fingers on top, four fingers on bottom, and then you raise the second finger for the pitch F. Now you may be wondering, what, what's the deal with, with learning F? It's such a complicated fingering. Why are we learning that at the beginning? Well, because F is what we use as Do, our starting base for uh, music class. Um, after we do recorders, we, do, we sing the Ionian scale. And what the Ionian scale is, let's see, let's see if that works. Can you see it? All right, we'll see if that works. A little closer, a little closer. There we go. So uh, for the Ionian scale, we end up singing Do. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Ti, La, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. But we do it slower. Um, and then we do just the hand sign silently. And this is an opportunity for students to audiate, 
to kind of imagine the pitch in their brain um, um, instead of just singing it. And then we do our letters. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. And the hand staff's gonna come in handy in a few months when we start learning um, uh, or remembering for fifth grade, we're kind of doing everything in review of how to read the five lines and four spaces for music reading. And then we do our cadence, which is do mi so do so mi do. And so that is our Ionian scale that we do. The next thing that we do is our flashcards, which okay, I love this little rolly, this little rolly table. I just need to roll. You can do it. We're rolling in the deep. Okay. Um, the next thing we, we do is our flashcards. And our flashcards have um, the pitches that um, that grade level will be, will be learning for this entire year. So these are the flashcards for fifth grade. Fourth grade has their own. And there are 20 flashcards. Um, for the first nine weeks, we're doing it to where I sing and then they echo. Hopefully by the end of the year, I could just show them the card and they can sing it without Miss Parkin even singing it for them. After we do our flashcards, we do our composer for the month. Um, uh, we just finished uh, learning about Lynn manuel Miranda. And the composers that we do for the month is part of a larger, it's part of a larger district curriculum for composers. And that curriculum is called Music Memory. There's actually a uh, competition um, at the district level that Owens can participate in. We only take about five to eight students, depending on the numbers. And basically it's a um, competition where um, students bring their computers and they answer questions about the music that they hear and about the composers that we've been learning throughout the year. Um, so we just finished Lin-Manuel Miranda for September. Um, since uh, we're starting October, we are now starting with Edvard Grieg, which I know some of y'all might be like, Edvard Grieg, that's a, okay. Um, I've never heard of that guy. You've actually heard of his music because his music, his most famous piece is everywhere in media today. And you might be like, no, it's not. I don't know his music. Yes, you actually do. It's the dun 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 Okay, sorry, getting distracted. After we do our composer, um, we do our Momo Mastery, um, which every time students um, earn or learn an aspect of a song, then they get a Momo sticker to go on the board. And so um, yeah, each song for fourth and fifth grade is in a um, foreign language. And for each song, there are three different aspects. Um, the fourth aspect, the letters, we are not gonna do that until the goal is to do this exact same song four or five months from now where we actually read the letters and we play it on our xylophones. But there's a rhythm aspect where they play their recorder and sing the rhythm at the same time. Uh, solfege, where they're singing and doing the hand signs. And then the score in the uh, foreign language. And I have a recording for every single one of the songs that we're learning in music class so students can actually look up those videos and learn um, how those uh, different songs work. Um, where, okay, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Yes, it worked. Um, after we do our moment mastery, we do some rhythm improvisation where I play my drum and they have sticks and I, and they echo the rhythm while we find our yellow spots in the circle. And while this is happening, we have fourth and fifth grade, uh, we have the some students, their job is to hand out instruments. And so they will actually hand out bells for our rap name game. And for our rap name game, this is a opportunity for students to sing their name. Um, and so we start off with everyone singing together. 
And then I start off and I go, my name is Miss Parkin. And the rest of the students echo, her name is Miss Parkin. And then we go around the circle and every student sings their name. My name is George. His name is George. And again, the goal of this is to be building confident uh, students, confident singers, where and some students, they may sing like, my name is, because they're, they're still trying to get that confidence with their singing. Some students, they have no problem with it. They're like, my name is Josiah, and they, they just go for it. Um, and again, the goal is not, I tell the students, I say, um, I said, oh, you made a mistake. It's not perfect. Do I care? No, because the goal of singing is not perfection. The goal of music is not perfection. It's, are, is the singing strong? Can I hear it? Is it beautiful? Or basically, please don't scream at me. And is it healthy? Is, are you producing sound in a way that will, um, that's keeping your voice um, healthy to where you're not losing your voice and your voice will be, if you continue with this path, that your voice will be able to be strong and healthy for the rest of your life. Um, so once we do our rap name game, we go ahead and head back to our spots and we do our swimming swimming. This is a audiation activity. Audiation is where you hear sounds in your head, but you don't say them out loud. So for example, if I say, if I sing, Twinkle, twinkle, little. You already thought in your head, star, without me even saying it because you're hearing that in your brain. Um, another common thing is that if you hear the, like you can um, imagine the voice of like Darth Vader, you don't have to actually look up a recording of that, re of, of his voice. You could just imagine it in your brain because it's so, you're imagining that sound in your head. And so we end up singing this uh, song and with each round we sing it, the words are highlighted and whatever words are highlighted, we're not allowed to sing. So it helps with building timing and also imagining the pitch in our brain. By the time we get to the very end, um, the goal is by the end, they should still have be audiating to where when they sing the last word, even though they haven't sung hardly any of the song at that point, that they can sing that last word in tune um, because they've been list, uh, singing it in their mind the whole time. Um, and this was a closing activity I designed, but sometimes um, Miss Parkin designs activities and I got lots of new ideas like, hey, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. I'm always about getting things better and better for students. Um, and sometimes I'm like, all right, let's do this activity. Let's try this. Let's try this. Um, so I learned some new activities and new ideas, um, during professional development this year and thought, Hey, let's integrate some of these. And some of them worked out some of them, they, and not that they haven't worked out, but it's one where, um, all the ideas and, uh, that I get from other teachers and, and, um, like online and stuff that I can integrate into the classroom. All those ideas are great, but really at the end of the day, it's my goal is what works for our students right now. And so if there's an activity where we're trying it and it just doesn't vibe with our class for this season, that's totally okay. It'll be for another season. Um, but the goal of all the different activities that we do in our lesson is that we always address singing, strong singing, healthy singing, um, doing a version of rhythm, um, rhythm reading, and then uh, movement. We're always moving. And with our composers, we, when we learn about our composers, we're not just sitting and learning. We're As we're listening to the music, we're moving and dancing and incorporating our body into the music learning experience. And then we're always uh, performing and playing instruments. So each one of these activities is built around um, a cohesive, holistic music learning experience so that, um, so that students aren't just getting singing in the first nine weeks, they're singing throughout the year. They're not just getting rhythm for one unit, they're getting it throughout the year. Um, so then they are ready moving forward. I tell 
Uh, I start telling fourth and fifth grade now. I say, here's the here's the deal. Because sometimes I'll I'll have them do something that's a little bit harder than what they're used to, and they're like, "Ooh, this is like like really hard." I said, "That's okay. If we fail, because it's really hard, I'll tell them. I say, "Hey, if you're like, man, man, we must be terrible because like this is it's either this is t- like we're just terrible at this, or this is just really hard." And I tell them, "Hey, guys, the reality is is that this is really hard because the mindset that I have that I have for you guys is I want you guys to be ready for middle school." So fourth and fifth grade, we're starting to do a little bit harder stuff, a little bit more complicated, starting to um, stretch our capacity for uh, being able to work hard and doing more challenging things. So by the time they get to middle school, they will be the most prepared sixth graders when it comes to music ever. Um, And so I'm really excited. Uh, Fourth and fifth grade, um, they have been uh, fantastic uh, so far this year. Um, a little chatty here and there, but also um, I take chattiness as just excitement for uh, what we're doing and they can't hold it in. So they just want to blurt it out. But um, fourth and fifth grade, what I love about this grade is that they are becoming so independent um, where they are helping with different tasks in the classroom of helping lead singing this, lead uh, in passing out instruments, lead in doing recorders. Um, And so um, it's a joy to see students that perhaps I taught in kindergarten years ago that now they're at the point where um, they are becoming very strong and confident musicians. And one other other thing I'd like to say is that um, this uh, this year, fourth and fifth grade um, students across the board, um, I'm very proud on how we've been able to get into our higher register without much, um, without much effort. So, um, oftentimes fourth and fifth graders, um, they may decide, okay, I don't want to sing high. I'm just going to sing super low, like la, 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 which is fine. But fourth and fifth grade, they still have the capacity to sing really high notes, like, like, um, like singing up that high and, um, fourth and fifth grade this year, they have been putting in the work and the energy and the effort uh, to still have their higher register, um, which they should have until they're about seventh grade. Um, But depending on the person, of course. Um, But uh, we've been um, doing really well in singing in our higher register, which means that's, that's gonna improve the health and strength and quality of their singing voices Um, and I'm rambling, but I'm just, I'm, I'm so proud of, uh, fourth and fifth grade of, uh, how dedicated they are to be, be committed to working hard. And, um, when I'm, I'm pushing them, I'm like, come on guys, let's do a little bit more. Um, they're like, okay, okay, let's try this. Okay. Miss Parkins crazy. She wants us to like work even harder. And just the, the attitude that they bring to the classroom is just an uh, absolute blessing. And I enjoy teaching fourth and fifth grade. Um, If you have any questions, feel free to email me and um, I'll get back to you. And that is the conclusion of a summary of what fourth and fifth grade have been uh, learning this year. All right. Bye, everyone.